Hello and welcome. This is Knits by Nilo, a knitting podcast, or should I say a knitting blog? <laughs> Hi, my name is Nyla. Um, I'm maker behind Knits by Nyla, and I am coming to you today from Seattle. I uh, should have done an intro earlier when I was back home, but I kind of didn't think about it until I was on the plane um, landing at Seattle, but I am in Seattle with my dad for the Flock Fiber Fest that is hosted by Shop or Mercery. Um, it is running from August 4th, which was yesterday, Friday night, um, through Sunday, August 6th. Um, this will be my first fiber festival or yarn convention, anything like that, um, other than the New Jersey Wool Walk, which was store to store, local store. Um, but yes, we have tickets for Saturday to Sunday. Um, I have a couple of vendors that I'm very excited to see, um, most especially um, Explorer Knits Fibers, Allie and Darren. And um, I also wanna see the Maker Collective, I believe they're called, um, Super Glow Fibers, um, and a few more. Um, but I just wanted to intro this vlog. We're actually getting ready to head out now. My dad's in the shower. And I hope to take you along as best as I can. Um, I don't really know what to expect from today. I do have a little list of patterns that I would like to make um, there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Patterns that I would like to make, the weight that they're meant to be made in, um, the yardage needed, the size I would have to make, and about how many skeins that would be, just to try to make it easier for me when I'm shopping. Um, that if I see something that I like, I know I can know immediately this will work for X pattern and you need this many um, skeins. Um, if I can, when I get home, if you would like, I can try to make this available to you guys. Maybe, I don't know, view only access. I just did it in Google Sheets and I inserted images from Ravelry so that I wouldn't forget what the pattern looked like. And hopefully that will help me make a decision about colors and things like that. What would look good on me in that style? Um, so I don't really know what to expect other than probably a lot of people. <laughs> I'm hoping that I run into some YouTubers or Instagrammers that um, I follow and love, maybe take a picture with them. I have a little bit of social anxiety, so I'm already like, I don't know if anybody else's brain is like that, but I'm like pre-planning things that I might say <laughs> if I run into them, um, just so that I'm not super crazy awkward in person but it is what it is it'll be a good day my dad's here encouraging he's so excited to be in seattle neither one of us have ever visited seattle before so in addition to flock um we hope to do a bit of sightseeing we don't leave until monday evening um so we'll see how it goes i'm excited i did watch a couple of um, videos while I was in the airport. Um, one from, I think she changed her name recently. Now it's APT Atelier, um, Anna Passi Trevino. She is a Pacific Northwesterner, I think they call it that. And her latest podcast, she actually put some Seattle recommendations um, at the end, hoping to try a few of those things. And then I also know Strain Things by Mel from Canada is coming in. Um, Chelsea from True Lane and Marlene from Marlene Knits. They're both um, here, Red Door Fiber Studios, Kate is here. Um, and then we'll see who else we see. It should be exciting um, and I can't wait. Thanks for watching.
Seattle Flock Festival. There's my golden child.
Also a beautiful color. The color, that color, and the color next to it. Hint for my scarf. <laughs> I can't ask for anything because you ain't got time to make nothing. Uh, the devil is alive. seen me wear red anything in your life.
little vlog. Um, it's actually day three technically because Friday night was day one of the festival, but I was not here for that. I only uh, participated in Saturday and Sunday, but I just wanted to come back and um, give you a little recap of our first day there, um, our first full day in Seattle, um, as well as show you my goodies and then tell you what's up for today. So um, yesterday we, what time did we, I don't know what time we woke up. We have a little bit of jet lag. So we were up, I think pretty early. Um, we ordered breakfast to the room, I think around 7.30, then we got dressed and we headed out and Ubered over to Magnuson Park. Um, when we got to the park and to the hangar where the festival was being held, there was already a little bit of a line, but we were pretty close up. And then shortly thereafter, the line really started to grow. Um, it was still an hour before the event was scheduled to start and there was a line like wrapped around the block <laughs> which i thought was really cool but um they did open the doors right at 10. Um, people who had tickets were scanned right in um and i immediately bolted to the explorer knits and fibers booth um and at the same time i like sent my dad i'm like you hit the flock merch i'll hit ekf and then we'll meet up after that so my very first uh, item to show is my Flock Fiberfest hoodie. Mm. It's so cute. It's so comfy and cozy. Um, I got mine in a 2X and um, I've already worn it once. I wore it last night um, when we were hanging out in the room, snuggled up in it. It was perfect. I'm like tempted to get another one. Maybe I should. They have another. They have a green color. Maybe I'll do that today. And then I also got the nice giant flock tote bag. Let me hold it back here so you can see. It really is so huge. And it has the nice logo with the squiggly sheep. So cute. I'm excited to have this. And it was good that I brought this because though I had my tote bag and a spare bag, I actually have a Explore Knits and Fibers bag that I ordered online a, like a couple months ago. But it was good I had this because it held all my yarn purchases for the day. <laughs> but like I said, I ran over to the EKF um, booth. I was happy to see Darren and Allie there and the whole team. I met Faye. She helped me with my checkout. She was wearing the tip top tank, which is on my to make list. Um, and hers was really beautiful. I'm thinking now today, if it's still there, I might go back and get Puget Sound colorway to make the tip top tank. I already have yarn for the tip top, but why not have more? <laughs> but anyway, um, there was already like a crush of people um, in the EKF booth. And so she had her booth organized. It was a beautiful setup, by the way, but she had her booth organized with fingering um, weight yarns on the first wall. Um, I'm not really sure. I think more fingering on the back wall and then the DK was on the right side, um, which was near the checkout lane. But there were so many people that I couldn't even really get over to the DK side, but I was able to inch in and grab some fingering options. And so here are the first things that I picked up, which make a nice, um, I'm not intending to do a stripe project, but this would actually be a good moonset tee. Um, but let me see, let me look at my list. Cause I did try to buy by my list yesterday. Um, it's not page one. Ah, okay. So I even checked off the projects that I got yarn for and I tried to write in the box. And I also updated on my doc, but I tried to write in the box the color that I got for a specific project so I wouldn't forget it later. So for the It's a Wrap tank, I got the Gumwall colorway. And this is the Denali sock base. 
And this was a part of her Seattle um, collection based off the infamous gum wall that <laughs> is here. I'm like, I kind of want to see it, but also not because people talk about like her, Allie, uh, Rashma from Hello Lavender talk about how like cool and gross it is at the same time. So I don't know if I want to actually see it, but that I got this, I got three skeins of this for the It's a Rock Top by Anne Catherine Bush. And then I got the color linen for the Bella Notte blouse by Emily Schott, 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 sorry. Um, it's a nice long sleeve, um, kind of like cropped scoop neck blouse. I got the linen colorway which is beautiful. Originally, I had wanted to do the Straya cardigan by, um, I think it's Dre Renee Knits or Andrea Maori. Um, I had wanted to do linen and then get the Brights collection that um, EKF did for the summer market, but she didn't bring all of those colors. Um, she did have um, pepperoncini, in my neon era grapefruit but she didn't have freezy pop and i think i would have needed freezy pop that bright blue in order to have enough colors um so instead i just decided to grab the linen um for the bellinate blouse if i if i see it if i go back and she still has the color there i think i want to get the puget sound colorway which is a nice blue green. Also for this top, I think that would be really beautiful. Okay, and I got three of these. And then I also grabbed the pepperoncini color, which Allie was actually wearing herself, I believe in a mini mock neck. Um, in a mini mock neck tank by Jessie Mae, she looks so cute. She had it on with a nice little floral skirt and some platform. Hill, heels, pa platform sandals, excuse me. And um, I think Darren also had the mini mock neck on, but hers was a variegated yarn. I'm not sure what colorway, but I got two skeins of the pepperoncini and that is gonna be for the Helianthus tank by Andrea Gunn. And then um, it was so funny how many people wanted to be at the, the EKF booth. Like I said, it was a crush of people to get in and you kind of had to like squeeze by to reach for the yarn that you wanted but also just as packed as that was people who like got in got what they wanted and got out you then had to form a separate line to pay and that line was again like wrapping along the length of you know the space um and my dad he had like i said i sent him to grab the flock merch and he had come back over um which the flock vendors, they were kind enough to make up these um, pamphlets that were vendor maps um, and also a list of the events. So they had like meet and greets or um, super glow fiber. They had a build your own mini yarn flight thing. Um, just things like that. Um, I didn't really attend any of those. I don't know if I'll get to any of those today. Although today they're doing the community indigo dye dyeing. They have a vat of indigo dye and you can bring things that you wanted to dye um, there. I didn't bring anything for that, so don't know. But <clears throat> it was helpful to have this vendor map. So EKF was all the way in the back of the hangar in the first aisle. And again, you kind of entered her booth on this side then there was more yarn this way, more yarn this way, and then the line to pay was wrapping like down this hallway. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, as I was coming up on the line and Allie was really nice, she even started to help check people out, which kind of gave them um, opportunity to meet her and take pictures and stuff. I didn't get to speak with her or, or take a picture with her, maybe today. That's one of the things I'm looking forward to if I go back. But um, when I went to check out, like I said, I met Faye. She was able to reach behind her and grab me some skeins of In My Neon Era. And this is in um, 
Rocky Decay. And I'm going to do the Me Oh My Tea by um, Park and Knit. I originally wanted this color for, um, I believe, the clove sweater um, because Arrow Knits and Pearls has done a hot pink sweater, a hot pink clove sweater. I think she got her knit, her yarn from Passionate Yarns. Um, but I don't know, I like wanna be bold enough to wear a full long sleeve hot pink thing, but I don't know that I'm there yet. Um, I've had a really great experience wearing my mini mock neck out for the Barbie happy hour that I did at Cleo's yarn shop the day that Wandering Flock had her sale. I got a lot of compliments. I felt comfortable and confident wearing such a bright color and a bright outfit because my skirt was hot pink, but that has never been really my style, but I'm learning that it's okay for me to wear colors, but I think I'm still going to start with a smaller garment. I think a t-shirt and all of this would be a good entryway before I go full on sweater, but who knows? I might change my mind later, but that's where I am for now. So these are all of my Explore Knits and Fibers um, yarn. Um, my dad was like super shocked by the turnout of the whole festival. And like, he's like, wow, people are really waiting online. And <laughs> you know, they have, just as many bundles of yarn in their arms as I did. I don't think he really expected it to be that popular, but I'm like, no, this is a serious, we didn't come to play games. <laughs> oh, and they also gave nice um, paper bags with their logo, which I, I mean, I'm hard pressed to throw anything with a logo out, but yeah. My next purchase, there was a booth for Hand Spun for Hope. Um, and they are a nonprofit company that works with um, women in Rwanda. Um, and I believe the proceeds, um, the proceeds go back to the women in that village. Um, and they use all different kinds of materials. They had some merino. And then what I was looking at was the Ethiopian cotton. Um, it's a sport weight, I believe, 100 grams, 368 yards. Um, and I got this nice pink. And it is soft and it's kind of like slubby, like it's not perfectly spun. Perfectly imperfect, I would say. And there's the little logo. Hand spun for hope. Um, and the lady there at the booth, she was telling me just a bit about um, the company. Um, they have an organization, handspunhope.org. Um, you can find them on Instagram as well. And they also had in their booth um, lots of traditional clothing. They had baskets, they had fans, they had you know bracelets, all kinds of beautiful stuff that I wish I had more time and more money to participate in, but I got three skeins of this Egyptian cotton in this lovely color. And it's all, I believe she said it was all naturally dyed as well. Um, and then with your purchase of a certain amount, I forget what the amount, um, they also let you choose a, a free project bag. And I got this beautiful bag. It's very lightweight. I believe this was also made by the ladies in Rwanda. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Oh, I wonder what that does. Can I put it on my belt and then be a walking knitter? There's like a little, oops, there's a little loop here. Hmm, I should have asked. But yeah, I'm excited about that. And did I say what that project is going to be? No, I did not. This is going to be the Abuela Tank by Michelle Jones for MM making. So I'm excited for that as well. Um, and then from there, I think the main thing, I don't know if I mentioned, the main vendors I wanted to see going in was EKF. I also wanted to see um, Super Glow Fiber, which I've purchased from her before. Um, and that yarn was 
just delivered a couple of weeks ago. I haven't shown it on the podcast yet, but I will in my next episode. I was able to stop over in the Super Glow Fiber booth and I kind of wanted, I don't know if you'll be able to see this picture, but I'll put another picture up. Um, this is the Wide Rib Sock by Summer Lee. Let me see. Not great. I'll just put a picture up. Um, but it's the picture I saw when I originally saw this project, I think it was on Instagram and it was a like a pale pink and a neon pink stripe. And I was thinking that's what I wanted. But when I went over to Super Glow, she had a lot of variegated yarns and there was nothing. She definitely had the neons, but nothing exactly like the picture. Um, and I was like, well, why don't I just do another color? And then I saw this. This is Dreamsicle in her sock base. Superwash Merino, 75% and 25% nylon. It's so beautiful. It's kind of like a yellowy, a yellowy creamy base with um, orange running through it. And then I thought I would pair it with her shaved ice colorway, which I think, um, I, I wanna say the collection is called Mahalo Glow. Um, I want to say based off of Hawaii, but don't quote me. Um, you can head to her Instagram at superglow.fiber or her website superglowfiber.com and check out the details. But this is shaved ice. Originally, I had picked up one color that was a little more red than this, and it was called Lava Glow, I believe. Um, and I had a, hard, a really hard time deciding between the two, but I think the oranges in both of these might have worked better than the more red with this one um but they're both very beautiful and so i hope to do those wide rib socks with these um and then i also went to i did a little bit walking around everywhere um and just seeing what i could see i saw miss babs yarn there which i was very tempted but i also just purchased a lot of miss babs yarn um during the wool walk in april and i already have sweaters planned for that um and her website i feel like is pretty easily accessible to me they usually have yarn in stock and um they're also carried at that semi-local to me yarn store so I think that I already have a list of colors I want for them I think I chose not to purchase from them because I can go back to them anytime which I probably could for other things too not a vendor like EKF where she releases things in very limited quantities um, and she does bring things back frequently but not all the time um, but anyway I also passed by the Moondrake um co booth and they had this very pretty i guess i should say first um well anyway moondrick had this very pretty icy blue Ooh, look at me and this color is called frozen it's the fua fua fingering 315 yards and 50 grams it's um 70 brush cashmere and 30 percent superwash merino and so I got two of these and I also pre-ordered two of these in their um, regular fingering base like this. I originally thought it was mohair, I guess it's not, but the project that I wanna make is the Rose and Honey Shawl by Hello Gabriella. And she was actually at the event yesterday. Also, I got to meet her as well as Not Bad Brit. They're both um, from the Makers of Color Collective, which that was, I think I purchased this before I saw Moon Drake. And Hello Gabriella actually had her Rose and Honey shawl on and I was telling her how I wanted to make it. Um, and it was, you know, it's on my list to get yarn for. So after I was at the Makers Collective booth and I spoke with her and I saw and felt her shawl and she was joking about how Not Bad Brit like kept touching and like trying to take her sh shawl home with her and she was saying she helped her with the design originally because i believe 
well, with the little scarf, there are aspects of crochet in the little scarf designed by Hello Gabriella and Not Bad Brit is a crochet designer who had some amazing pieces um, displayed um, for patterns you could purchase. Um, so after I saw the shawl in person, I was like, I definitely have to get yarn for it. And when I went over to Moondrake, I'm like, this would be a good color. I think it's a good way to incorporate rights and colors into my wardrobe, but still not have a project that should take forever. And like, if I'm feeling overwhelmed by the color, it's a shawl so I can take it off and put it in my bag as opposed to ripping off a t-shirt or a sweater. But while I was in the Makers of Collective booth, um, Not Bad Brit had some merch of her own. This is a new, um, I believe she said it's a new logo. She just had it designed by another woman of color and she had it on the Tumblr. So why not hydrate in style? Um, and then they also had these pom-pom um, books. They had a couple of them. This is a crochet one. And as she was talking to me, um, I was flipping through um, the book and there were like two patterns back to back. I was like, ooh, I want that. <laughs> and she was like, see, see? And so um, I purchased this book. I'm excited to go through it more when I'm back at home. Um, but this was about $25. And I believe she said, I don't want to misquote her, but I believe she said that the owner of Pom Pom is definitely a woman of color, but I don't, I believe she said an Asian woman, but I'm not sure. But either way, it's good to have a magazine. That is my first like knitting or crochet book of any kind. She also, um, Brittany also introduced me to Flora De Stitch, um, a New Orleans based dyer. And this color is the Nouveau color. 75% um, fine superwash merino, 25% nylon, 462 yards and 100 grams. I think this was the last skein and that color is so beautiful. I will probably make like a pair of socks or something out of this eventually. Um, but yeah, it was really, their booth was really cool because it wasn't, you know, one thing specific to just them as makers, it was a collective. Um, of things for makers of color. They also had their, um, they had yarn and fiber from Melanated Boho Bay um, and Not Bad Brit. She even had these really cool earrings on that she made from the yarn locks that um, Melanated Boho Bay has. Um, and then they also just have some business cards from them. Um, from Hello Gabriella and Not Bad Brit. And then they also had like um, the Knitting PT. They had her wrist kit, which I already bought that online, so I didn't buy it that day, but it was really nice to see, um, you know, really nice that we have a collective of um, things made and produced and created by makers of color. I think that's awesome and definitely want to support them. Um, and I also stopped by the Hello Lavender booth. I got to meet Reshma and Mike. I was stunned by the amount of work that they did. I don't know if you've ever watched um, Hello Lavender, like the little clips that she posts to her IG story and like how she's making and she has like hundreds of little pieces of clay as she's like making something, but they had so much inventory of items and you can just see the detail that goes into each thing. And I was, Mike was doing the checkout. I'm like, I don't know how she did all of this. And he's like, yeah, the last six weeks have been pretty crazy. And he was saying that she does typically make extras of things throughout the year as she's doing collections, but she also puts so much time and effort in the last few weeks um i was even showing my dad like she had there the um there was one collection she had where it was like sand a picture of a sunset and then she also did like seashells i already have that it arrived a couple of weeks ago also um but also really similarly around that time she had this firefly um 
collection and with little like moon mm, kind of like unicorny moon stitch markers with the jar of fireflies i don't know if i showed that well one second But it's so beautiful, so beautiful, um, and really talented. I don't know, I don't know if I mentioned too with her, um, with that sand one. I did a pottery painting thing with my friends, um, and I used her sand motif as like my point of reference for how I was painting my pottery, and I don't know how she manages to get so much detail into things because I struggled with a you know a pretty decent sized pottery piece and then this one I thought was just so beautiful too it was kind of like abstract watercolory um abstract watercolory little dangles I don't know but beautiful excited to use those on a project and show them off um, she also had her daylily crop on in a hot pink color. I don't know if it's EKF's color or not, but either way, the daylily crop is on my to make list because of hers. Um, so we'll see. I didn't get any yarn for that yesterday. And then I, I already showed kind of the Maker Collective tote bag that I got. I also walk past Sorella. I didn't plan to get any yarn or anything from her this time, but their booth was really amazing. Um, the vibes were very nice. My dad's out the shower. Um, the way they had it designed, it was like walking into a store in New York. Um, it was so beautiful. And when I got back from the festival, I actually checked her IG story and I saw that she had actually had so much trouble Friday when their shipment was delivered, so many things had been damaged in transit and they had like kind of to rejig their whole setup because of the damaged pieces, the damaged goods, the damaged yarn, but you wouldn't have known it at all given the setup. Um, but we, I got, she had these tote bags made just for flock and her booth was mostly her autumn in New York collection. Um, and I got this um, hand cream in the sweater weather scent. The sweater weather. Sweater weather. But it smells beautiful. My dad and I were actually, he thought I bought it for him. I'm like, no, I did not. Um, but yeah, her booth was lovely as well. They had a really cool setup because they had a whole, um, they did Pino's palette, which is one of their, you know, that's one of their things that they do when they're like releasing a collection and they um, kind of make a mood board of the yarns um, to say how you could pair them. But they had Pino's palette for their minis. And so they had a wall full of 60 colors of minis to choose. And you could make a half, um, a half size palette or a full size palette and one of the yarn fairies there would help you choose um, your options. I thought that was a great idea and great engagement. Um, I saw on Instagram last night and today some really cool palettes. I like um, Chelsea from True Lane. She did, um, she picked a palette full of greens. That was beautiful. Okay. And then, oh, there is more yarn. Okay, well, I'll start with this. We also um, walked past, there was a wall full of tote bags and t-shirts with all these fun sayings, one of which was yarn snob. And the company that had all of these lovely bags was Mitchell Wool Co. And they're actually a farm based in Michigan. Um, they're about an hour out of Ann Arbor. Um, and they had all these really lovely sayings. And one of them, they had these all over bags and t-shirts for flock's sake. <laughs> 
I love that. I think the lady there said they have over 200 um, animals, including sheep um, there. And so I just got a couple things. I didn't get any of the yarn. Um, I didn't want to rush into a decision given that they were new to me, but I got this little keychain that says I'd knit that. This also made me laugh out loud um, when I saw it. Horses make me happy. You, not so much. <laughs> I got that. I'm a horse girl. And then they also gave me, I think they gave this one to me for free. You gotta be knitting me. And they also gave out, with your purchase, a free reusable shopping bag, which also has for flock's sake. But since they are only an hour out of Ann Arbor and I have family in that area, the next time that I go to Ann Arbor, I will be taking a trip to their farm. They said they do give farm tours. They just, she said this um, spring is a good time to go because spring is when their lambs are born. They had 74 lambs born this year, which is more than um, normal, but I think she said they usually have about 60, but she's like, yeah, you can bottle feed them. Just let us know, you know, when you're coming. But the tote bags are great quality. I took a picture of a beautiful pair of socks, which was also cool, just like the wooden keychain I had on the socks and some of the sample pieces, they had wooden tags that gave the pattern name, but they also had a QR code imprinted into the, into the wood that if you scanned, you know, how QR codes work. When you scan them, it takes you to a website or whatever it was. So it took you to their website and to the pattern details. I thought that was really amazing. Um, and then I also walked past, uh, I don't even remember. Oh, okay, Making Treasures. Um, there was a booth. It looked like the, the, how do you call it? The business owners were women of color, Asian women, and I wanted to patronize as many businesses of color as I could. Um, they didn't really have, they didn't have yarn at all, actually. They were more of, um, I guess, well, this one that I got is Stitch Notes, Notepad for Makers. So they had a really nice um, one that I, I didn't get. It was a gilded notebook um, that was very beautiful. They had things like washi tape and I want to say they had stitch markers i'm not sure i don't use washi tape um so i didn't get any of that but they had this and they had another i don't know where it is they had a sticker a cute little sheep sticker um that i got um but i just got this little notebook i think it will be good for whenever you're working on projects if you need to jot something down or if you want to freehand something and you want to sketch it out there you go um and it also has the grid dots can you see that the grid dots on it that should help you out um and then i think yeah my last yarn purchase was from you to yarn yarnery and lifestyle market place place hand painted yarns original patterns nature inspired home of the squirrel um, they had a lot of items, but I walked past and I squished and I fell in love. This is um, their fingering four ply. It's 75% superwash merino and 25% mulberry silk, 437 yards. And this is the color Fijio. I don't know. It's F-J-I-O. But I, originally I saw it in a yellow and that's what I squished. And then I'm like, uh, I'm a pink girl. I can't deny it. It looks kind of like red here, but it's like a neon-y, a neon -y pink. So I got two skeins of that. Um, I forget what I said it was gonna be. This was not originally on my list, but I'm thinking tank top. Um, and so even though, like I, I don't really, well, my mini mock neck in the alpaca is okay. I've been trying to get like plant-based fibers for tank tops, but I think that with the silk in this merino blend, it will still make for a good tank top. And I don't really sweat too bad in um, 
in my alpaca, so I think the merino should be fine. Um, so I got two skeins of this colorway, and then they also had in the same um, base, they also had like a little basket full of their show, exclusive show colorways. I wanna say there were two or three um, colors, and they had like light, dark versions of it. So the one I got is Flock One Dark Sea. Ooh. And it's like a slate gray. Oh, so lovely. And I was thinking that this could be my yarn for the Juno top um, by Inez Oliveira. And I need to write that down before I forget it. <laughs> Which top it's meant to be, but I got three skeins. I'm excited to work with that and it's so soft but yeah and they had like so this was the dark version and they had one that was like a shade well a couple shades lighter and then they also had it on like a mohair base um but yeah that was never heard of them but the yarn is beautiful ut yarn um and i think that's it. Oh, that's the Sorella bag. Okay, I think that's it. There was one other um, booth that I stopped by where, like, um, I don't know if I mentioned that um, on the Maker app, um, Flock Fiber Festival, they design a bingo card. Um, and on one of the things on the bingo card was like squish a yarn that's new to you. So in addition to the mulberry silk, there was also a booth called Nouveau Yarn and they had a yak base that was fantastic. And that's, I was originally thinking of that base for my Juno top. Um, and I was leaning, they kind of had a lot of like dark and moody colors. Like a, it was a very dark, like blue green. There was like a dark cranberry, um, and then something similar to that, like gray, but I couldn't, I was having a hard time picking. So I'm like, okay, let me just leave it. If I still feel strongly about it today, then I'll go back and get it. But that yarn I would definitely work with in the future because it was a surprising base. And I think they had it in both a fingering weight and um, a larger weight. And then for a second, I thought maybe I would do the Saturday shrug if I could find it in bulky, but then I didn't like the colors they had available in bulky. So I don't know. Um, but also, so once I finished shopping, um, we went outside, they had a couple food trucks. Um, I went to the um, El Coreano, Coreano, how do you say it? It's Korean, but with an L at the end, but it's like Korean Spanish fusion food. Um, we had a torta, a bulgogi torta sandwich called I Poppy. It was so good. We had uh, mama's tacos and a chicken taco with a mango salsa on it, as well as um, barbacoa tacos, kimchi barbacoa tacos. And then they also had an elote corn dish. It was very good. While we were in line, we met some ladies from Montana, some ladies um, from Idaho and the local Pacific Northwest area. Um, they were all very impressed that my dad was with me <laughs> on this trip. Um, but yeah, nice conversation. It was good to meet people. I ran into Ari Nitz um, as well as Maya from What Maya Made. I'm hoping to see her today wearing my Tolsta. Um, I saw in passing Kate from Red Door Fiber Studios, um, Paisley Knits, I saw in passing. I met Elise from Sunday Fiber Co. She was the first person that I recognized when we got online for to be let in for the event. Um, it was really just a beautiful day. I'm excited for today as well. After the festival, we Ubered back to our hotel and I think the jet lag caught up with us. We ended up taking a nap and just ordering room service. Um, yeah, we were wiped out. <laughs> I think because we were, we had the delayed flight, so we didn't even get checked into the hotel until like 2 a.m. Then we didn't go to sleep immediately. Then we were up at seven. 
and such a long day we just needed to chill out but today hopefully i need to wrap, wrap this up so we can get out the door but today i'm hoping to take the ferry to bainbridge island and go to shop la mercery um on my wish list i think is maybe some knitting for olive cotton merino and pure silk but we'll see um because on my list i have Blouse number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear, as well as Camisole number nine, I believe. Um, and it calls for those things, um, but we'll see. And then from Bainbridge Island, we'll go back to Seattle. And I'm not sure if we will either do Pike Place Market first or go back to Flock. I'm leaning towards going back to Flock because I was on IG this morning and getting a little bit of FOMO of people who were like, well, I don't even know if they're already there because it didn't open till 10 but they were saying they were going to be there and i'm like well i want to be there too so <laughs> we need to get out of here and go do that and then after that maybe we'll go to pike place market eat my dad is obsessed with getting seattle fish so we'll get seattle fish maybe we'll do the aquarium also um and then tomorrow we have a late flight so we're also hoping to do the space needle and um, there's like a cruise around the harbor or something like that. I'm not sure. But thanks for um, catching up with me. Um, and stay tuned for more. See ya.
go, day three.
day in Seattle. I'm gonna cry. I hope I think I've got sweatshirt fuzz in my hair. <clears throat> anyway, it's our last day in Seattle. Unfortunately, our flight is later tonight, um, but I wanted to come back and tell you a little bit about our last day at Flock um, and what we did yesterday. So um, we got a little bit of a late start yesterday. We wanted to kind of take our time, but we headed out to Flock, I think around 1030 or 11, I'm not sure. Um, but when we got there, it w was not as crowded as the day before, um, but I think that was perfect. That worked out perfectly because I actually was able to run into Chelsea from True Lane and Marlene from Marlene Knits, who Chelsea was hosting Marlene, um, who came all the way from Germany to spend time with her and to go to Flock. And I was so happy to be able to meet both of them. They're both so sweet and kind and really um, an inspiration with their crafting. Um, so yes, I was excited to talk with them and get to take a picture with them. I also was able to meet Jess of Shop La Mercerie who hosted this amazing, amazing event. And a big shout out to Jess and her team, Emily, Tegan, Maya, and all those whose names I don't know. They really put on such an amazing event. It was awesome to be able to see in person the things that like fuel us online and meet the people who inspire us and you know help us do this craft that we love um it was really special um i also was able to run into ali and darren from explorer knits and kate from red door fiber studios i was like thanking the gods um <laughs> because they were actually all together so I didn't have to like introduce myself to someone multiple times like I only had to think of like one thing to say to them as a group um which helped my anxiety a little bit but yes they were all so sweet and I like you know you always build things up in your head to be bigger than what they actually are but they were so kind they gave me hugs we took a picture and I'm happy to be able to support their businesses and have them inspire me to create um we saw them on our way out of the festival but I did make a few other stops to some booths not that I needed more yarn um but I did want to show a few more things that I got um, one of the first booths that I stopped at was um, 316 Dye Studio, and I stopped there. I had recognized the logo um, because I, when I was scrolling on Instagram yesterday morning before we had it out, I saw someone had posted um, a cute little video of the botanical socks that they dye, and I thought that was so cool. And so when I saw it in person, I'm like, oh, I recognize that. And then I looked at the socks and then continued to look at the rest of their booth and the rest of their yarn. They had a really awesome, um, I don't know if he called the collection Happy Little Trees collection, but they have a Bob Ross inspired collection, both for yarn, stitch markers, art. I think what also caught my eye there, they had a project bag that's meant to go on your, um, on your wrist so that you can knit while you walk or while you're standing or whatever. But the cool thing about it, it, it had a printed design and I believe it was trees, but you can color in with any kind of permanent marker. You can color the bag as you see fit. I thought that was really cool. Um, and then they did have some beautiful yarn. I picked up, this is Pacific Blue in organic fingering, 100% non superwash merino. 100 grams fingering weight four ply 438 yards in this beautiful blue color it's kind of blue greenish and it reminds me of explorer knits and fibers puget sound colorway which i was intending to like if there had been stock left yesterday i was thinking about purchasing that um so i'm lucky that i found this colorway and again it's from 316 dye studios um and i got three skeins of this and they also had um stitch markers that they had commissioned from dot co 
also for their Bob Ross collection. And I think, what did he call, I think when I was checking out, he called this like lake with a view or something like that. But it has just a beautiful little lakeside motif. If you can see that. And just little clay stitch markers to go with it. Um, and then I also passed the Wool Dreamers booth. Um, and it was nice to learn a bit about um, their yarns. I believe they're all from, let me not get it wrong. I wanna say Spain, but I'm not sure. Um, but what I ended up picking up is their Saona line, which the colorways they had are a collaboration with Ozetta. Um, and I do have a few of her patterns in mind that I want to wear. And um, when I picked this up, the ladies that were working the booth, they were both wearing, um, one was wearing the Outline Tank by Jessie Mae Designs, and the other was wearing the Air Tee by Ozetta, both in this yarn. So the color I got is color Guthrie. And this is 220 meters or 240 yards in 50 grams of Merino uh, and Manchega wool, and then ooh, something, it says 50% Algodon de Andalusia. I don't know exactly what that is, but either way, it's beautiful. And it's kind of a heathered gray-brown, kind of taupey brown. Um, I was touring between this and a lighter shade of gray, like a creamy gray, um, and my dad made the final call. So I think this will make, I should have took a picture of her outline tank um, and the, the air tee, but those are both options. I don't have a pattern in mind, but oh, I know. I think algodone is cotton because that's what they had like informational um, flyers next to each of the options the lines that they carried and I think I picked this up because it was a cotton merino blend um and then I also got I already I'm obsessed with my flock merch if you couldn't tell I have my tote bag I have my sweatshirt and I wanted to pick up the flock project bags little drawstring bag so I got one for myself and then I also decided we're gonna do our first giveaway. So I have two and we'll match, yay. Um, and with the giveaway, I didn't just wanna do a project bag, I wanted something to go with it. So while I was picking up, went back to Allie's booth and for myself, I got the new mug that she came out with. She had these, um, I believe at her summer market and then the leftovers were put on her website but she brought some to flock and isn't that just a beautiful mug i'm a tea drinker not a coffee drinker but i would drink juice out of this it's beautiful this is not in the giveaway this is for me but i figured it would be appropriate to do a mini set and so i don't want to take it out of the plastic so sorry if there's shine from the lighting but I believe this is all of the colors in Allie's um, Seattle collection. I know, I think this is Rain Shadow, Pike Place. Uh, not sure about the dark one or this one. I feel like I know them, but I'm not 100%. I'll put it all in the description. Gum Wall, which I purchased, and I believe this is Puget Sound, which is pretty similar to the one from um, 316 Dye Studios. But I figured this would make a nice giveaway, first time giveaway, should that be the thumbnail? First time giveaway for my channel, Knits by Nyla. Um, so since I had such a good time meeting other makers and dyers and small businesses and just connecting in person, I think maybe the rules for the giveaway would be comment below your favorite 
moment or experience with meeting or talking or connecting with another maker or someone who inspired you in your craft journey. So just leave that comment below and I think do um, maybe hmm, I'm trying to think how will I see all of the comments to choose a winner. Mm. do oh let's do hashtag find your flock with your comment and that will enter you to win these items in a giveaway i want to say starting off in the u.s only um just because i am in the u.s and i don't have a great experience shipping outside of the US right now um, with delivery. So we'll keep it US for now and maybe in the future, who knows what will happen. But I think that's just a nice gesture to contribute to our growing community here at Knits by Nyla. Um, I hope that you like these prizes. I would be tempted to keep this myself, but that's why I bought two bags so that I wouldn't feel bad about <laughs> uh, keeping one. And this beautiful set from Explore Knits. Hope you like it. But that's all for editing Nyla here. And I just wanted to say, I forgot to mention that if there is a third item in the Flock Fiber Fest Find Your Flock giveaway for this video. And that is the um, Flock merchandise stitch markers that they created in collaboration with all stitch studio they are seamless stitch markers that fit um, knitting needles up to size us 13 or 9 millimeter so with the project bag and the uh, mini skein set from explorer knits and fibers you will also receive these stitch markers um, i also forgot to mention that i will be picking a winner in an upcoming um, podcast video um, and I'll just ask that you, once the winner is selected, which I will leave in the in that future video, that you contact me via email so that I can get your address to send you the prize. Um, hope you enjoyed the video so far. There's a little bit left and I uh, can't wait to choose a winner. Thank you. I wanted to tell you about what we did yesterday. So after we left Flock, um, we dropped our stuff at the hotel, charged our phones, and then we went over to the ferry at Pier 52 to take the ferry over to Bainbridge Island, which was a beautiful ride over. It only takes about a half an hour. And then once we arrived at Bainbridge Island, we just did a little walk about the town. Um, I had wanted to go to Shop La Mercerie, had actually planned to pick up some knitting for Olive there, but I got my times wrong. I thought they closed at five o'clock, they closed at four. We landed at Bainbridge at 354 so we did not make it in time before closing but we still walked over took some pictures in front of the shop we actually they have a very i think i peeked through the window and the store is very beautiful but they even have some nice sitting seating areas outside in the front um so we just sat for a little bit and then we walked back um i stopped and got some clam chowder um and then we made it back in time for the next ferry out um, and then we walked around the pier area, so from Pier 52 to around Pier 56, um, taking pictures, getting some gifts and souvenirs for our family. And then we stopped and had dinner at, I think it was called the Crab Pot. Um, got more clam chowder. <laughs> it was good. And then we just headed home and relaxed. Today, we are gonna do the Space Needle, maybe the glass, uh, museum we'll see and then pike place market and then we're out of here but it's been so great i love seattle we'll definitely be back especially to shop the mercery thanks for watching
residential neighborhood established in the city in 1853 or a long, long time, time ago. Over on that side, the big old blue wet thing is Puget Sound, all salt water. It goes down south to the capital city of Olympia, where the punk rock scene moved. Over on the other end of the water, it's all of Bainbridge Island and the city of Bremerton. You can learn more about Bremerton from the lyrics of the song Bremelo by Sir mix -a Over on this side is the Capitol Hill neighborhood, where punk rock used to live in the 80s and 90s until they founded the band Def Cap for Cutie. And then over on that side is the city of Bellevue. You can learn more about the city of Bellevue if you absolutely must. We're going to find ourselves all the way up here at the top like this. Here we are. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>